The Nigerian ICT sector over time has been the envy of many other sectors in Nigeria over the years. With just about 400,000 working lines in 2001, today Nigeria currently has over 150 million lines with telendesity put at over 100 percent. As Nigeria celebrates 18 years of democratic rule in this first part of the TV series, we x-ray how much the ICT sector has fared. I am Bayeru Agavi. You're welcome. Yet 2017 marks the 18th year of uninterrupted democratic rule in Nigeria. The journey, which began in 1999, has many highs and lows affecting all sectors of the economy, with no exception including the ICT and telecom sector. In the ICT sector, the growth or otherwise has been described by many as a mixed taste, with many companies closing shops and many others increasing all their investment. In the words of the NCC EVC, Professor Umar Gamba Dambata, the growth has been great. We have come a, go a long way. We have come a, go a long way. I normally reel out the statistics indicating the tremendous progress we have made since the liberalization of the sector in 2003. Okay, the mobile teledensity is more than 100%. You know, if you want to keep counting, yes. too. The contribution to the economy, you know, is over 500 billion naira. Over, you know, from the time of liberalization to the tail end of 2014. Okay, that's a period of 10 years. The investment, foreign direct investment, is to the tune of over 30 billion dollars. The sector has created more than 2 million 500 jobs, directly and indirectly. But to the consumer, there is a wish for a better situation. I wish um, we could um, have infrastructure for broadband that um, would extend down to not just the um, urban areas but to uh, more rural areas. The wish is for us to create more awareness and then for people to, to for knowledge, capacity building for people on technology like IoT, big data, artificial intelligence, blockchain, you know, because that's where the future is. This kind of reactions could be as a result of the lack of awareness on growth recorded or otherwise. For instance, nations across the globe have come to realize the crucial role of ICT in facilitating and accelerating social economic development. Based on that, it is not surprising that virtually all countries either belonging to the developed or developing category are taking cautious steps and transforming their economies with technology. Critical to achieving this, however, is the formulation of an ICT policy which states the focus gives the direction and map out strategies to achieving the set goals. It's on this premise the Honorable Minister of Communications, Barrister Adebayo Shitu, says the government has not failed to impress both local and international watches. The ICT sector's commensurate impact has not yet been felt in the lives of most Nigerians. In view of the foregoing, therefore, I humbly post it that tackling the five steps below is key to remedy this anomaly. We will encourage government and private sector time-bound investments in good quality infrastructural facilities and services led by our agencies like Universal Service Commission Fund and actively supported by both local and international investments. We will also explore the investment in the second and possibly a third backup satellite for that concert and actively engage other global infrastructure providers to invest in the sector. My major achievement is unveiling our eight point agenda. I remember you asking me about my vision yeah, exactly. for, 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 the, yeah. for the industry. And I think um, we waited, thought um, deeply about what um, we should do for the industry. And I think there is unanimity of opinion within the commission from my team that we should come up with a vision. 
that will span over a period of five years. My main responsibility when I came here is to make sure that the agency is back on its track. First and foremost to focus more on regulating IT in both public and private, which we, I believe now we are on track. Yeah. Two, to review our standards, guidelines and frameworks to make sure they are up to date and they are presentable so that we can present them. And we are on top of this as well. Number three, knowing that NIDDA is the clearinghouse for all MDS ministries, departments and agencies, it was part of my plan to make sure that this we enforce it, that we remind all MDS that whenever they want to embark on any IT project, they must come to NIDDA and seek for clearance. And this is what federal government mandated all of them to do. In addition, ICT policies are meant to define the position of the government on how it intends to deliver on its mandate using ICT. In India, for example, the government sees ICTs and their deployment for social economic development as an area in which the country can quickly establish global dominance and reap tremendous payoffs in creating wealth and generating quality employment. Finland regards the development and use of ICTs in its economy as key to national efforts to improve the quality of life, knowledge, and international competitiveness. Malaysia, with its vision 2020-20, envisages the country as a fully developed nation by year 2020-20, and Singapore's vision of transforming the country into an intelligent island sees ICTs as the main agent for promoting accelerated development and growth, and for gaining global competitive advantage. And now to Africa. Mauritius, learning from the Singaporean experience, has developed a strategic ICT plan that forms an integral part of its overall vision of social and economic development. Mexico has also sees ICT as key to achieving progress in social and economic development. Honorable Minister of Communication Adebayo Shitu again says, Nigeria has its eyes focused on the growth and implementation of policies that will make Nigeria a force to reckon with in the digital economy. The ICT sector is the key driver of the Nigerian economy and therefore needs well thought out, joined up and linked reforms. Effective reforms must be planned in the context of an integrated framework. While there are many policy and strategy instruments and some plans in the sector, there is a need for an integrated medium term sector plan to bring together the disparate policy threats so as to eliminate bottlenecks such as last night delivery of fiber optics, revitalize assets capable of fostering digital inclusion such as the Nigerians, sustaining the Nigerian digital revolution through a digitally ready government and the education sector, among others. But on how much the private sector and associations are fed, here is what they have to say. While Chams believes identity management should be a key area of focus, PFS says policy for driving the digital economy must be clear. Identity management is about solving the, one of the biggest challenges we have in the country, that is knowing ourselves um, well. Uh, you are sitting in front of me, yes, I know your name, but if you go and put on like two tribal marks, you could come back with another name. I am Femi Williams. Uh, if I just take S, William is a name of somebody. It is not impossible that I may be able to get away with some transactions that I'm going to do. But how do you know Femi Williams beyond reasonable doubt? Um, it's been proven that Nigerians are honorable guys. Most people doing corruption is because they, they're sure they will not be caught. Right. Many people will not do it if they know that they will definitely be, it will be discovered and they will be caught. We are all Christians and Muslims, we are very active in churches, we are a, uh, 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 highly reputable gentlemen and ladies. But because someone in their system will believe the system is so loose, they will not be caught. That's why people do it. We still haven't got right a policy that guarantees that we can support and develop our own technology entrepreneurs in Nigeria. And until we are able to come to a point where we are able to develop our intellectual property so that we can produce what we consume and we have a policy that also helps us to consume and encourage 
consumption of what we produce. The Nigeria Internet Registration Association and the Association of Telecoms Companies of Nigeria, ATCON, believe the role of the stakeholders must not take a backseat. On the performance of the industry, here is what they have to say. Uh, we have seen the impact of technology on the economic uh, development of the nation. The impact of the GSM revolution, for example, has totally changed the face of communication in Nigeria. And of course, information technology continues to be a driver for efficiency. Now it is normal to see online stores uh, where you can buy things, uh, have it delivered to your doorstep. Now you can buy tickets from the comfort of your home to fly. You don't have to get to the airport to be queuing. Now you can transact business uh, from the comfort of your phone, send and receive money. It was not the case when you had to go to banks and queue and uh, ask for your tally number. So yes, technology has done quite a lot to improve the life being of Nigerians. I see a lot of focus in that area. I also still see that we need to engage governments, both the regulator and the ministry, in introducing regulation that creates a level playing field whether it's the over-the-top players that are coming in to play in this market or those that have significant power uh, in the market so that we can actually have innovation still to come in. I think that the fintech area, the, uh, the mobile banking, the unbanked area needs to still be addressed and there will be a few other areas like Internet of Things. Obviously, Nigeria has had a number of policies targeting growth in the industry. But none of such has delivered through its purpose, perhaps mainly due to lack of political will to implement such policies, though some will blame it on change of government and lack of policy continuity. With this administration's drive, there is a renewed hope for a better implementation of ICT policies this time.